A dead city in the daytime, a living city at night. The streets come to life, the shops open up, the workshops go into an activity. The scent of hot bread comes from bakeries, the houses light up. And it could have been this mysterious place in the tales of my grandmother that she would have told me when I was a child, as long as there had been a common language between me and her. Yet, there wasn't. Let aside the short-ended story and pursue the question marks that emerge naturally. Whose history, whose memory, and whose heritage? It is the history of the Armenian people of Anatolia, and the memory of walls, stones, and ghosts. Yes, it's my heritage. Not only those are tangible or intangible, but also those that are still present on the site and visible, as well as those that are absent and invisible. The residence of Katilikos, which is defined by its columns and arcades, is built on a rock on the road to the Stadal and looks over Zagarador shores to the edge of the Akurian Valley. It was converted to a mosque during the era of Seljuk conquest and the huge hexagonal tower minare, a polygonal tower with polished stones, more than 20 meters high, with Arabic inscriptions, rises alongside the residence of Catholicos. It hasn't been ruined until now, and so it is easy to conclude how solidly it was built. Although it has not been possible to ascertain this from the inscription, from which only the word Allah can be read in Arabic, it is believed that the building had been the residence of Catholicos, or a tribunal under which four arcaded cellar rooms were built and are still visible. It is referred to as a watchtower, a tribunal, or a mosque, and on the postcards of Ani, simply as Ani's tower. The Catholicus's residence is sometimes thought of as the Royal Assembly, and people are sometimes confused by its various names, and often believe that these are the ruins of different buildings. But the truth is, it is one building that has occurred different names in different time periods and has served different purposes according to need. It's a single-story construction, 12 meters wide and 14 meters long, adorned with carvings and polished stones and built on the precipice of a Korean river. As its interior is arcaded and culminated, there is nothing else like it now at Ani. The interior is very impressive and majestic thanks to its five-columned and arcaded structure. The thickness of columns is 85 cm and the capitals are adorned with carvings. The arches are half egg-shaped and solid, so despite the destructive effect of the centuries, they remain standing. There are five huge windows on the eastern wall, which looks toward the Akurian Valley, and through the windows you can see the Akurian River, which is like a big bow of winds its way down to the valley, sometimes running quietly and sometimes tenderously. It is this building which Professor Nicola Mar has recently converted into a museum by renovating green parts and reinforcing it with two iron doors. So now the old residence of the Catholicos is called the Mar Museum of Ani. Upon entering the museum, we find open drawers of wood, one span wide and built on the facing wall, on which there have been placed various examples of fine stone carvings found in the ruins of Ani. And under the wall, near the door, in closed glass cases, there are objects on display that were found during the excavations. Among these objects are parts of his skeletons, pieces of leather, silk shirts, removed from the princely thumb, with delicate embroidery, often of animal shapes, and in perfect condition. There are bowls, 
and over a hundred large and small arrow tips, or darts made of iron, iron and stone axes, various tools, copper sensors, tips of lenses, delicate silk, and iron ornaments, and there are also beautiful porcelain vessels, vases and plates, as well as fragments of iron chains, copper plates, iron locks, ancient iron door hinges, iron bolts, iron tables and porcelain vessels and glass lamps. A large, many-branched candelabra is particularly worthy of notice. It is very rare and of great value. There are also many examples of many types of tools, vessels, carvings, guns, shields, and many other items in these glass cases from which it is easy to ascertain the great strides in progress our ancestors achieved in the civilization of their time. The statue of Kagig I Pagraduni, which was found in 1906, is in a special glass showcase in this museum and it remains a beautiful example of Armenian art of the 10th century. As we can see in the photograph, His Holiness the Catholicos was photographed next to it. Near this statue, there is a miniature model of the St. Kirkor Church, which was found undamaged and it is now placed high up on the wall. It is a fine piece of work and thus appears to be the work of an accomplished artist. Professor Nicola Mar has named the museum after himself, and so it is called the Mar Museum, and every day it seems it is enriched with newly discovered items from the excavations. <laughs>